From the offices of Nelson and Murdoch all the way up to Madame Gao's high-rise garden, we want to hear your nerd shout. And today, we're shouting about Daredevil. Yeah. Those two places aren't that far apart. Shut up. Yeah, that's true. Shut your mouth. Okay, dude. Daredevil. Daredevil. <laughs> Hello, I'm Kevin Becker, and I'm here with the rest of the Nerd Shout team, and you need to know why we do this. We do it because we love it. Let's find out who they are. Hi guys, this is Dimitri Hartman, and sometimes the line between good and bad can be a blur. Let's talk about that. Oh wait, that, oh that's my eyeline? Sorry, I, I, I missed it. Let's talk about the show. Hi, I'm Mark Cirillo. But you can call me Darling Devil. <laughs> I literally look ridiculous. Hey everybody, it's Celtic Area. I'm excited to be talking about Marvel's Daredevil. Hey guys, and welcome to Nerd Shout's Daredevil Season 1 Review. Yeah. Spoilers! We are Warning. going to talk about the whole series as a reaction, and so we will be doing some spoiler things. Yep. If you have not watched the show, please go watch it, and then come back and watch us. You can put this on mute in the corner while you watch Daredevil, and then sign into a different account, and then watch. watch I'm it. fishing for views. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Anyway, we are here to talk about Marvel's first Netflix outing, Daredevil. Mm -hmm. uh, the and then we're going to be the dark side of the universe. Exactly. We're going to be dividing this into four topics. We're going to talk about the characters. We're going to talk about the story. We're going to talk about the connections to the MCU All and the other Easter such stuff. stuff yeah. And then we're going to talk about what we want to see in the future. So. Keep those ideas in mind when we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. Topic one, the characters. Dum -dum -bum. <laughs> All right, so first off, Daredevil. Charlie Cox playing Matt Murdock. Yeah. I thought he was wonderful. I found out in, in reading after I watched the show that he was actually Joe Quesada's first choice for Matt Murdock before they even had got the rights back to do the, to do the show. Right. And I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. He learned the accent. He learned the fights. I thought he was wonderful. He had that... Just the feel of Matt Murdock for me. Mm -hmm. What do you guys? What did you guys think of him? Um, yeah, I, I actually loved him right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. My my actually my roommate said something interesting where he liked him as Daredevil, but as Matt Murdock he was like, but he'd only watched the first couple. Okay. And I uh. and then I was like, well, but they kind of explain later why he's kind de like detaches himself from yeah. humans, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, like, yeah. for making too many connections, and I I feel like. That's what he was sensing, but he hadn't gotten to that episode yet. And I think so, that's because I thought he was great. Yeah. That's that is that is like six fault essentially that he is kind of disconnected with humans. But like I, I thought I thought he was great. Um, I thought he was a very interesting uh, addition. Like his composure as Matt Mur Murdock was was terrific. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing was that like out of all the characters in the series, he was the one that evolved kind of the least. In mm -hmm. terms of like character development, because mm -hmm. he was all he was already Daredevil. Right. We saw kind of his origins yeah. as a child, but we didn't see anything more than that. Yeah. Essentially, it felt like they were split characters between Daredevil and Matt Murdock, but two split characters that could live inside the same person. Yeah. And that's right. what I I thought is like the key to 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 catch. Uh, mm -hmm. In a Daredevil story, yes. To like get that point. It's the us. dichotomy. The dichotomy is very important because you have. Matt Murdock, who one of my favorite things about Matt Murdock as as a Daredevil fan from the comics, is just how much guilt he carries on his shoulders and yeah. all the oh, everything. He's <laughs> and, then, and that's a huge part yeah, of it. I know about that. <laughs> he's and Irish. That's you what know, it is. he's, he's got to protect everybody. It's and it's all on him. And then Daredevil is his ability to just do that. You know, yeah. and it's uh, I, I and I always have loved Matt. And, and Daredevil being these two very different, very clear people. Yeah. And Charlie Cox does a great job with that. Yeah, yeah, he's really great. And, and, and it's like phenomenal in like everything. Like he, he, he's in shape and like, yeah, he's just really, really <laughs> pretty good. badass. <laughs> yeah, and when he really kicks ass, it's yeah. like Daredevil. And you be I believed it. Yeah. Like when he would literally transform and just be like, mm -hmm. kind of like, I, what, I, what I don't know is like, were all the moments uh, that he acted in um, 
uh, st stunt people, like uh, where he did all the stunts. Well, you could. He has a very distinctive like jawline and lips yeah, and that's nose, true. and so you can and you see like for most of it like, when you can see his face, you know it's him. Yeah, like, because in the because second episode, nobody that yeah, just that and fight scene in the hallway. Fight scene felt like it was all him, oh, yeah. and I just lost my shit. I, and I love just watching him just go like, I'm really hurt. I have got just keeps going <laughs> and just like yeah. pull himself oh. back up. Just yeah. oh. it, it felt like old boy, and I, I think I've heard like a few people kind of like draw those similarities. And old boy, and this like one take that is just absolutely brilliant. Where he's mm -hmm. just fighting all the bad guys in the final scene, and that was it. Harken back to that, and I loved it because I love. And all they did that an amazing culture. job of like him. You felt his injuries. Yeah, yeah. you know, like a you lot of the times they the just punches. sort of. People get hit in like superhero movies, and yeah. then they just kind of keep when going. His lung, like, when his lung collapsed, my uh, my buddy's like, "Your lung collapsing is one of the most painful things in the world." And watching him just just gasping, and then when he gets his air back, just being like, "Oh, yeah, fuck!" <laughs> That's exactly it. It was brutal, brutal. Now yeah. on the other side of that coin, Vincent D'Onofrio as Wilson yeah. Fisk. Wilson Fisk in this show, Vincent D'Onofrio. This is a conversation I had with my my roommate and I were watching it at the same time. And I was, and we got to the episode where he, uh, where he enacts revenge on Anatoly, and oh my god, and we we said it, we were like I wasn't ready for like a damaged kingpin, like I, and I wasn't ready to be sympathetic towards yeah, the kingpin. And yeah, that was none of us would have been exactly. That. I wasn't expecting. And that and my roommate episode. had a very had a very a kind of. I don't know if I like it, and I was like, I really do, because you get to watch him become Kingpin, and you watch Matt really become Daredevil, like, accept yeah. that he's Daredevil, and Wilson accepts that he's the Kingpin, mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful, beautiful arc, and I wondered what, what you guys thought about it watching it. I, I never expected to even see, like, a backstory to the Kingpin. Right? It's like the, yeah, it's, it's the... Uh, official backstory now in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and mm -hmm. I think that they did a terrific job. I liked watching the two of them become who they were going to be. Yeah. yeah, a lot. I think, and it, it took me aback at first, but I think a, a, a thing many people were ready for was Kingpin is a villain. Kingpin is the Kingpin. You know, yeah. we. Uh, I grew up on the Spider-Man cartoon, mm -hmm. you know, from the '90s, and Kingpin <laughs> was the villain. The villain, of and the story. we were all wanting that, but no, it's as much his story as it is Matt's. Yeah, you saw them grow together and there were moments where you were like, who is right? Is it the Kingpin? Right, or because you because that's what I think Daredevil. the greatest villains have is that mm -hmm. they think they're doing the right thing. Yeah. Exactly. And and he goes about it all the wrong way. All the wrong way. And, <laughs> and I'm not as sure clear what his vision was because it, it sounded like a totalitarian sort of mm -hmm. government. Like yeah. he was still going to be in control of yeah. this utopia. Yeah, including so. the crime and the good. Thing. But the He's backstory just... with him was amazing. And oh, yeah, I, I love the backstory. I wasn't ready for it at all. I was like, into. This is so strange. Suddenly, there's a bloody kid in the mirror, and I'm just like, everybody. Had been that was awesome. Because I didn't get to <laughs> so watch creepy. it right away. I didn't get to start at like midnight because I had to work on Friday. Yeah. So I got home from work on Friday, and about you know Friday night, I started getting the oh my god episode nine. Oh my god episode nine. And then you go into it, and it started like, oh, episode nine, this is what everybody loved. There's a bloody kid in the mirror. Oh, this is going to be something. This is going to be a thing. Well, another <laughs> thing I loved about I was so, loving that scene before you even saw him see himself as the kid in the yeah. reflection, because I love it when they show what the day-to-day, -day, like, daily routine is uh -huh. for characters that you never see that yeah. True. Before. And it was this beautiful, like... Like just sequence of him so like zen, getting ready in the yeah. morning, which they do Collected go back to again later. At the end, yeah. And it was yeah. like I was like, that's so beautiful, and sometimes harder to do in comic books. Yeah. And you just you literally instantly felt the whole thing with the music in the background. Remember how they connected the rabbit in the so in a snowstorm uh, with to his him backstory, at the wall, at the wall. Uh, and even at the end when he was in, in the prison, prison just staring wall. at that wall. Yeah. yeah. And he I don't know if you guys wall and sees who he is. Yeah, and there's the beauty of the Good Samaritan bookends. At the beginning of in the first episode, Karen, when they show up in the uh, in the interrogation room, Karen goes, "What right. are you, a couple of Good Samaritans?" And then he's got the Good Samaritan speech at the end. Yeah. And I was just like, "Damn it, these guys are good." Yeah, um, they managed to find that's Drew Goddard for that's true. And, and Stephen Denight and Stephen Denight is amazing. That's true. Yeah, Stephen Denight as well. Um, so let's flip it to our. I, I feel bad even calling them what would be a supporting cast because they're so important, they're so crucial. Yeah, which I love that about the show yeah. too is that the it's so cast, ensemble. I, I, some of their scenes I thought were 
some of the best scenes in the whole Absolutely. show. I was Definitely so excited to see Ben Urich oh, on yeah, camera. That's right, exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. Because you've got Ben, Foggy, and Karen. Let's talk about them for a second. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Foggy is so fantastically dorkily charming. He's amazing. That and as he was one of my favorite characters. Total nerd like me. I was like, that'd be me if I were if I were Foggy. Like that. I love that stuff all the time. And Karen Page. I that poor girl. I can never stop shaking my head at that girl. <laughs> well, yeah, and if and we, perfect we, casting. On, Deborah and Will. Like, it was is that because I don't know if anybody yeah. can do better what she does with like <laughs> vulnerability but still being a tough ass and mm-hmm. still like she's, just being confused yeah, she pulled and, that off so well yeah, yeah she's incredible. great i mean true blood she had got to do a lot of that i haven't too, seen true blood so i need she's to do that great she's it's okay phenomenal. watch the first like three four seasons <laughs> oh, come on because <laughs> no, she comes in later and she's amazing how Deborah much is i think brilliant. she comes in like season three or so like yeah, two or two or like I think it's he told him not Oh no, she comes in that. season one. That's right. <laughs> Kayla's saying she comes in season one. She's right. Yeah. Um, but I thought, that, yeah, I thought that she was terrific. I loved Ben Urick. I was so sad when they kill him off because uh, a lot of fans were hoping that they were going to get that connection between yeah. the Daily Bugle um, and Spider Man. Yeah, but it didn't great. happen. It was a very poignant moment, though. His death yeah. it really helped progress. And that here's story. the thing: Mark and I were talking earlier. His death might be the first, like the first major character death that they don't come back. Nick uh, Fury came back. I mean, right. obviously, bad guys don't count. Well, Nick Fury didn't actually die. Didn't though. actually die, but we had to like deal with his death. Um, Loki came back. Yeah. Uh, Groot came back. The, uh, massive spoilers for everything. But they're the saying that Groot, we it's going to be more of son of Groot rather than like yeah, actual Yeah, but Groot. still, like, you don't, it, it's the same actor, it's the same idea. Right, yeah, yeah, you know, Groot is Groot. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, and it's like, it's not it like, grew not out like of this him. Groot is going to have like a weird tree mohawk and not oh, yeah. talk to anybody while he's lifting the death um, metal. Teenager, <laughs> I don't care about you guys. <laughs> I am pain. <laughs> um, but speaking of like, yeah, the well, secondary characters, the his scenes with his boss um, in it the, at the newspaper, I thought were the best scenes in the in the whole show for some reason. Like really? there was something about them that blew my mind. His relationship with his boss, they were comfortable, were, but also uncomfortable at the right, same right. Like time. they had this major history together, and they loved, but they were. Clearly coming at it from different. Yeah. They both yeah, had pressure like from different editor, angles. And the other guy is the and city the way desk. Yeah. They yeah, handled the it. The way they directed it. The the way that they shot in the tiny his tiny little office, and and the way those actors handled it blew me away. Yeah. And I don't know what it was, but it was phenomenal. I and then, loved those scenes. And then the villains, the criminals. Oh my God! I, hmm. Bob Gunton as the owl had me so excited from the beginning. <laughs> And then he never gets the name of the owl. No, but he does have the green suit for a second because that's like the color of the weird like uh, stuff that Melvin Potter makes. And oh, am I going to talk about Uh, Melvin Potter in a little bit? Um, But before we move on, uh, Kayla, what are your thoughts on the characters in Daredevil? Could literally talk about these characters forever. I thought the characters were portrayed really brilliantly um, in the first season of Daredevil. Uh, starting off the bat with Matt Murdock, I thought Matt Murdock, Charlie Cox, did a really fantastic uh, job in portraying every single emotion, every feeling, like every punch that was get was freaking thrown in his face, every bite scene. Uh, really, he did a very very good job. And Matt Murdock as a character, I felt like. I learned more and more about him every episode and reasoning and reasoning why he does everything he does. Every episode that included a conversation with the priest. Um, those conversations were so intellectual um, to character development because you really on it really just changes like your whole idea um, of his character because he creates more of an understanding of why Matt Murdock is who he is. Um, but I do, I think, you know, I definitely give um, 10 out of 10 uh, Matt Murdock, his character, I thought was really portrayed uh, really, really well in, in this um, 13 episodes, this first season. Uh, going on to Foggy Nelson, um, his uh, partner-in-law, um, ooh, that was cheesy, um, to Foggy Nelson. Uh, the My favorite episode of Foggy Nelson's character, and... Um, other people may also agree with me is ob- obviously the episode where we get to learn a little bit more about Foggy and Matt's backstory. That was much needed, I believe, and it was also much needed for Foggy's character 
because um, it really it just you it broke it broke Foggy down a little bit because Foggy is a is a tad bit of the comic relief um, to the series, and I really liked learning more about his relationship with Matt, and then him, seeing him really get emotional and heart, heartbroken about the fact that Matt kept this secret from him. It really did affect him, and I re- I but I I liked it watching it as a fan. I really I really did love that episode. Um, um, avocado it was like avocados at law or something. I don't uh, lawyers avocados. I forget the exact um exact phrase. Um, you guys mention it later. Um, but oh, going on to Karen Page, which is um. The third person in this old wacky family of theirs um, in their law firm, uh, Karen Page, as a character, I feel like she had the one of the most dramatic changes from episode one to the last episode of the show. You know, she really started off to in this like damsel in distress um, uh, archetype uh, of a character, but you really see that change until uh, um especially throughout the entire series you just see her slowly breaking and breaking down um as a character and it really actually relates more um as um um to her uh, counterpart in the comics uh for people who um know her backstory will relate to this is that she just has a really she comes from a really really dark past and um, you slowly get to see that as, as the series progresses, and I really enjoyed um, enjoyed that because it it she in my opinion was the a character that really did like a one eighty for me from like episode one of the series to the final episode of the series, and I mean it was brutal when she killed Wesley, absolutely brutal when she killed Wesley, but she she just you know emptied out that gun on him, and it was. Um, really intense. It was like one of those moments where I was just like, oh no, oh no, what just happened? Like, that's literally what I did. And uh, bad guys. I want to talk about some bad guys because I love villains. And um, I think when a villain is portrayed brilliantly, I am very happy. And uh, a villain that was definitely portrayed very, very well was Wilson Fisk, a.k.a. Kingpin. Um, Wilson Fisk, is absolutely terrifying. We we get to see him in episode three, and um, it's just what I really loved about Wilson Fisk is the fact that we felt bad for him at certain moments in throughout the series, and I think that makes for a really great villain because when you feel bad for villains, even if it's like for a split second, um, and then and then you realize, oh my god, this guy's a bad guy. You hate them even more like they you hate them even more and they become more terrifying it's like it's and that's what makes a really great villain for me and I thought um Fisk um season one Kingpin setting up this um I can't wait till somebody actually calls him Kingpin that would be really really exciting when that actually happens but um Fisk season one definitely 10 out of 10 for me as well Karen Page 10 out of 10 actually 10 out of 10, I just love her. Um, Wesley, 10 of, I think the char- all the characters in the show are just fantastic. Ben Urich, um, honorable mentions, I can't go on, I think I've been going on too, too much, and I'll pass it back to you guys, but um, Ben Urich, great character. Leland, another great character. Nobu, Nobu, the hand. <sighs> um, uh, stick, oh God, the stick, uh, that episode literally called Stick. Uh, great episode, such a great episode, because I love seeing Stick and Matt, they're like, they just like freaking, it's like they hate and love each other, or it's just hate, ugh, I don't know, I don't, I don't know too much into their little comics, but, um, Stick, Madam Gao, uh, I know I'm, uh, missing some other people, but all the characters in the show, I have no complaints, they did a very good job in portraying the number one most important character show being... Daredevil. There's an interesting parallel that we've kind of talked about a little bit, but not really on camera, between Wesley, who is amazing, and yeah, he's one of the uh, best Marvel Foggy. Movies. The young Victor Garber. No. The young Victor Garber. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
between Foggy and Wesley because yeah. they're you, as much the best as, friends of the two leads. Yeah. The two main, yeah, Wesley is Kingpin's best friend. He talks about it, like even when he when Wesley dies, it's like such a big deal. And to see his character development and what he has to go through and that, and for Matt Murdock, like that's almost like the death of his friendship by Foggy finding out mm -hmm. who he is, who Matt mm -hmm. Murdock really is. Which is just like an interesting kind of parallel of the relationship that each one of them I has. also do love um, Kingpin's like, that's when he gets the angriest and the most violent. Is like, you came after somebody close to me? Somebody yeah. that I care about? When you turn the and table he does over. what everybody wants to do when that happens. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it I'm not throwing you down a fucking elevator yeah. shaft. It was kind of amazing. He was like, I'm not thinking politically. I'm not thinking about career or anything. He's like, I'm just going to fucking kill you. Yeah. yeah. It's just because it, you did that. It destroyed him. It broke him. It broke him so bad. And... Mm -hmm. It's and I loved Wesley because you obviously could tell that he really did care about Wilson. That moment yeah. when uh, after Gao shows up and he flips the table, and Wesley comes back and he's like, "If I wanted you, I would have called you." And get out! <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and Wesley goes, "I don't know if that's always true." And then he's brought oh, Vanessa oh, yeah. for the first time, and, she was and he was like, well. "This is this is what you need. You need so you cannot be alone." Yeah, you need someone to care for you. And it's really interesting because at first we thought it felt like he was trying to weaken him maybe to take that position before he died like it, the show was kind of letting you be hint, were, like, yeah. hinting at that Could have Wesley been anything, was yeah. the bad guy but in fact it was like and it was a really interesting thing I didn't think about it till just now because I did when we found out that someone had tried to kill Vanessa I was like is it Wesley is Wesley trying to bring him back into his power and now I wonder if because Wilson had Vanessa Wesley was willing to start taking more risks, like taking the gun to deal with Karen himself. Right, that he wanted to protect him. Yeah, it was like, you've got Vanessa now. If something happens to me, you have somebody infinitely more important. It's a best friend thing. Yeah. You know, it's just like, I need to make sure that there's always something there, to t someone there to take care of you. Yeah, it was really, it was really oh, honest. Wow, yeah. And the fact that he was saying that, like, he didn't really want to be in this city. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't really want to be in New York. It wasn't his favorite thing. And Karen was feeling kind of the same way. Like oh, it's almost like the relationship with uh, with um, Foggy and, and, and Foggy and, and Matt. Matt. That episode was so good, especially yeah, like when, when, when Matt college. is so beat up and they're in the that one. Oh, they're, they do and the they're in the room forever. Yeah, and like, avocados at law. Uh, so that was so like true West when they're like yeah. after he finds out he's Daredevil and like. That they're just in that room together and Matt can't move and like that whole thing. You I mean was like, oh my Shepard's god, true west. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly, exactly what like I felt like two this. characters. It the was thing. absolutely so Austin and Lee. Yes, 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 yes. Verbally, I love that reference. It's so true. <laughs> it's, and it's so true. honest because their banter was incredible, and that's what I love from Foggy. Like it felt so normal. It was so organic. It was yeah. so real. And, and they had all this history, and you felt it, and it was like, yeah, it was really. It really actually like it kind of broke me that moment like that was their, a, that was a rough episode yeah and then of course of course we can't move on without mentioning claire temple night nurse yes rosario yeah. dawson rosario dawson one of she was great, wonderful great in it and, and, and for a major cast member only appeared in like four episodes <laughs> yeah she was yeah, a great that's true. i didn't even yeah. think about that she was a she was like a great hint at what can come mm -hmm. off from like some of the spin-offs that yeah. she can pass on because she's such an important character but she leaves. Yeah, I so might I have groaned a little bit when um, they the when Foggy and uh, uh, Karen show up at the hospital, and she just happens to be the nurse that takes them in. Oh, but see, I love all that right. because you watched all of the storylines cross. You watched yes, the hospital administrator from Ben. You watched Claire, yeah. and then you watched Foggy, yeah. and, and like all of Matt's world connected for a second and then splintered again yeah right yeah that they are so close to finding out the truth that, that they but they didn't actually that that's the thing i did like about it was like oh they crossed but it nobody talked about yeah. it there wasn't this huge revelation all of a uh, sudden because yeah, of yeah, the just, coincidence yeah. of that that's like the the the, the yeah, treat it was for just the audience like, oh, they were in the like, same oh. place at the same time and they're not going to make that yeah. connection yeah and for the, maybe a really long time if ever and what i like and that leads us into our next topic is i absolutely love the storytelling in this show yeah um, it was dark and it was Excellent. rough and it was very, very different than anything that Marvel has set out to do since starting their own cinematic Huge universe. Fun, right? And I think it was perfect. Yeah. I, 
Edward or Edward Baker's run on Daredevil is one of my absolute favorites. Kevin Smith's is great. Bendis' is great. I Frank love Frank Miller. Frank Miller's is, is wonderful. Yeah, it's one of the but, things that defined the character yeah. for a lot of uh, you know a lot of readers. But mm-hmm. Brew Baker is, was huge for me, mm-hmm. and it was a big part of when I started reading Daredevil. And this felt like that. It had the shadows, and it had the the pain and the internal struggle, and I think that. Netflix is giving Marvel the opportunity to tell stories like this, yeah. which it can't tell on major network. Uh, yeah, no, it's, or it's, in the all movies. of it is like family friendly. It's very difficult to go and 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 have that that you know extent that level of brutality. God, it got so dark, yeah, the brutality yeah. like that kind of threw. Like yeah. I was like, you're, you're not expecting it. Right? Like, bones like, start popping through skin. I was just like, oh Ooh. my god, well, and not I'm just doing that, this and averting my eyes and breaking like, the bowling ball. That- Breaking the back, yeah, that, wow. that's that was the first one. But then, yeah, like smashing, up. smashing the mind. Russian's head and it's always head. Yeah. Oh and god! You see the, the body falling down. Mm-hmm. That moment happens immediately after a moment where I was just like starting to sympathize with yeah. him again because I got super excited because um, uh, what what's her name? His girlfriend, Mrs. Vanessa. Vanessa, Vanessa. Vanessa is like he's like if you're not into this, you yeah, know, whatever. Go and then she's just like no. She's like, oh, I don't no. know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Meaning, I don't know what I feel. But she didn't say it's a no. Trio. <laughs> and and I was like, I got all like giddy with excitement. And I'm like, oh, like, yeah. happiness for Fisk. And I'm like, why am I rooting? And then the next scene is him destroying Throwing this a man's man head. Like, Literally decapitating him by yeah. smashing it in a car door repeatedly. The it's fight scenes, the horrifying. violence, all of it. Horrifying. Really, really helped at, for me to show this desperation. Yeah. That. Hell's Kitchen, after the Battle of New York, is just dead. Yeah. And or it, at least it's dying. It's dying. Like its, it's soul yeah. is dying. That's what's happening. Corruption and it, is and on it the rise. It needs yeah. Matt. It yeah. needs Daredevil. And mm. I think this is the only place that they can accomplish that tone. Yeah. Because at this point, like you have Iron Iron Man, you have Thor, but they are like, they're kind of like the rock stars that are fighting yeah. like the big big guys you yeah. know like the alien invasions and the robots in Asia Ultron and all this stuff but there's so much crime there's so much despair there's so much death and pain in the small scale in this on the street little section just, right just in, just alone alone in the section which i also love the realism the the of that where it's like well he's handling these blocks yeah. yeah and like and and and, the, and they do that sometimes with these kind of characters like catwoman in dc mm-hmm. like she's got the east end now yeah and that's her yeah. territory because well that's what they can handle that's what they do like, yeah yeah and i i love that because it yeah. almost feels more real kayla then batman handling all of new york city yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now, like what do you think of the tone of Daredevil. Did you like the darker? Did you think it works? Did you think they need to do a story fix telling? anything? The storytelling? All that stuff. Yes. I really did love this darker tone they did with Daredevil, the, se- the series on Netflix. Um, I think that's the only way they could have um, went uh, went with it because of the fact it, they had to do the comics justice. Uh, and it had to be bloody. It had to be dark. It had to have a, this uh, darker tone. Um, definitely what I was like, what I was needing, something it was, I was needing this and I was wanting this and I was wanting Marvel TV to go with a, a go with a series that was much darker, um, especially than what, from what we know, which is Age of the Shield, which brings me to another point with, um, mentioning Age of the Shield. A lot of people are worried, um, and just actually quite live and worried, but, um, have questions in their mind how, um, how like Daredevil is going to connect with Age of Shield because they are so different in in tones. Like, um, being that Daredevil is the darker one and Age of Shield is much 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 more lighter. So, um, wh- I mean, what do you guys think? Like, oh, how how will they possibly connect to Age of Shield because they are so different in tones? That's a great it's really point, good. Kayla. And and I was thinking about that a lot too, with like oh, the yeah. darker tone, but I mean I have to admit, like the the first trailer we saw for Age of Ultron was so dark that yeah. I it 
fi- yeah. I felt physically disturbed by it like, <laughs> because it was so dark. I was like, I don't know. I, don't know. I have to see it. I don't know. Well, I want to yeah, see it. It's too the, dark. The it's reviews have been coming in so far for Age of Ultron. And I've also been saying that it's a lot darker. So well, yeah, yeah, and I and mean, I like, feel like, but I think it's important to show the different, just like in the real world. That's what I was about exactly. to say. Yeah. Like the really dark parts, and there's things, really dark things happening in the corners of New York City. Yes, that that's the honesty that people comes out can. Of this. The, you, they're think, living right next door to it, but that's not their life. It matches Karen Page's line of you don't see the world anymore you start to see the dark corners they yeah. exist we haven't shown a light in them just yet mm-hmm. too much we've seen some dark stuff but we haven't really started taking a look into the real shadows and that's what the Netflix series are going to let us do yeah and that's, right. that's what it is this is the darkest corner of the Marvel Cinematic Universe we've mm-hmm. seen to date Which is perfect because we want to talk about how it fits into the Marvel Universe yeah absolutely oh, right. Absolutely. So, so yeah, and it's just, not just the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but the Marvel, just the universe. Marvel Universe in total. It's incredible. Do you want to go first? You want me to go first? Oh my God! Because like, I, <laughs> I, I got a laundry list of things. I don't know where I'm gonna stop. I do. Melvin <laughs> Potter. <laughs> That's where I'm gonna start. I freaked out so hard. So the fr- Melvin Potter, if you do not know, is the Gladiator. Yes. Uh, who is a guy who made costumes, who created himself a Gladiator costume, who has some. Let us say issues with mental stability. I uh, love his character in this. He was brilliant. Yeah. That was a brilliant performance. So and from good. the first time he shows up, where they pan through saw blades to Fisk's line uh, with to actually blade. throwing the saw blade That's at so him, great. to seeing, yeah. to, to seeing, to seeing the, the schematic for the suit, I was just like, "We're gonna get Gladiator. We're gonna." Gl-. And I love Gladiator because Melvin doesn't at, at, at a certain point, especially in Brubaker's run, doesn't want to hurt Daredevil. But when Gladiator, t- it, the persona, takes over, get out of the way. Yes. And we see that he's super brutal. strong. He picks up Matt by the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like nothing. I wanted to talk about that sense, the line, it's the other half that counts. Yeah. That, that was a great <laughs> intro to the character, too. I, uh... I'm good. Continue. I love that he's like a costume maker, too. Like, he's... Kind of a fanboy. Like he's, he's kind of, he's he is, kind in of into cosplay. He's cosplay. He has <laughs> he has stilt man stilts. It's <laughs> kind of his thing. Yeah, exactly. And, and other see, people I mean, with their we cosplay. See, we see <laughs> stilt man as well. Um, uh, and his arrest is like incredible. I just I I love the way that they were deciding to link things. Like oh my god, <laughs> everything. Like the, that they're trying to express, trying to explain Daredevil and Kingpin through the cards. And in that same episode, I think is it. I think it's the same episode where we see the sniper Bullseye. who has a whole deck of cards and he has an ace of spades right by a sniper. You, it's just like they go to such length to cover his face, to say, yeah. we paid someone to take care of, to shoot him for us, and the fact that he's got a sniper rifle, which he fires awful fast. You hear the Takes boom. Takes three guys. Boom, boom, boom. boom. You don't fire a sniper rifle that fast. Um, and then uh, he has the deck of cards in his bag. Yes. Is that bullseye? I think it is. I think, I think we've saw and him for a second. has yet to be cast. Since we yes, saw so that thing. <laughs> it's not just that. Like we, if we want to get into like even deeper and darker parts of it, like we clearly have seen some hints at uh, Iron Fist. Yes. With Madame Gao. Madame Gao, the symbol her, on her. her heroine ring is the, the steel serpent. They call it a steel serpent, but it's in reference to the steel serpent, which is uh, one of Iron Fist's main nemesis. Nemesis, uh, nemeses, if nemeses. you will. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that Madame Gao is actually Crane Mother. Okay. Crane Mother is the one who runs one of the seven, um, you know, cities of heaven, um, Kunzin, which is, and Kun Lun, where Iron Fist trains in, is another one of those uh, cities. Mm-hmm. And they're essentially like rivals in that way. So, and when she says that, no, China... No, my place is considerably further. further. Wow. <laughs> I knew she was at least from Kunlun, if not somewhere else. Yeah, that's. Um, but I think that that's who she is. Yeah, because that's she better. is affiliated with uh, with uh, Steel Serpent mm-hmm. in I so many ways. I loved her character. I loved the great. actress. Oh, speaking of, I know this goes back to character stuff, but Fisk's mother. I love that actress. Yeah. loved the character. She was excellent, yeah. Yeah. I I was just, she was still I alive. I just that out there, because yeah. they're both just amazing older ladies. Yes, they are. <laughs> like, yeah. And talking about stories, like, stories. 
fantastic. like earlier, it was such a great twist to right? see her still be alive. And right? It was, oh my God. And there was, there were so many great, uh, St. Agnes, since we're talking about it. Oh, yes. Where Matt Murdock grew up. Right. Is also the same place that Sky grew up. Yes. In, in, exactly in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm-hmm. So, and they mentioned it in the last episode in the, of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Out. Yeah, so there's a lot of connections that they've been making. The incident is obviously Battle of New York. And yeah, so or like the, 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 what is it, the, um, Shake up in Harlem or something like that. That's in reference oh, to the yeah, Incredible, Incredible Hulk. Hulk, and that's something that Ben Urich uh, covered. Yeah. All those stories, I love this. Stories yeah. that Urich yeah. co- covered. The connections have been so so great, and there's some that uh, I, I I saw and I went ooh, and then I forgot. There's just so <laughs> many. There's so many Easter eggs. There's uh, Atlas Comics is referenced to, and Atlas was the comic uh, company, comic book company that Marvel was before they turned into Marvel. That's the door that you'll see right across from Matt and. Uh, I saw that, and I was like, whoa. Yeah. It's <laughs> There's, there's a link to Cornelius von, von Lunt and Cornelius yeah. von Lunt. It's it, he, it's the faded um, uh, print on their door. Who uh, the person? Like what was the there before? before. I also doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't Leland mention him as well? Yes, uh, the big hall where they have their gala, yeah. the reception where they, everyone gets poisoned at Kingpin's reception, mm-hmm. as also belongs to Cornelius von Lunt. And Cornelius von Lunt is the Taurus. Taurus, one of the one of the uh, you know uh, symbols of the zodiac. He's also a member. of of um, uh, the, the Great Wheel of Zodiac, and he's a villain, right? And we had the Zodiac Key. The Zodiac Key, and that also kind of, well, not kind of, it actually ties into at least the one shot of Agent, um, Carter. Of Agent Carter. And if they're going to make him be an older, old, older character, if they do go through with a second season of Agent Carter, I feel like they could totally bring in Cornelius Van Lunt as a villain in that. They reference Rocks and Industries, which amazing. were the ones... The, the Rocks and Industries were the ones that ended up... Uh, they're the ones that in the Marvel Universe uh, are at fault for Howard's death and his wife's mm-hmm. death, for Tony's uh, right. parents' death. So that's a huge connection connection with them as well um, to, to bring all these people in then there's Asano Robotics uh, that is the crate that brings in the black sky mm-hmm. um, and Asano uh, Yoshi I think he's Yoshida Asano he is a character who was born during the when the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima he was disfigured because of that and he hated Howard Stark for having been a member of the, in the development of the of the atom bomb and so then he becomes a, a villain of Iron Man called Samurai Steel as well. So we have, there's just so many connections that we see. We even see Stan Lee. Yes, did you see Stan Lee? His picture is yeah. in the back. Picture in the back. <laughs> yeah. So I'm um, so excited because I'm gonna all let, these things. I'm going to let Wikipedia reload here for a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was like, he's not going to stop. No, he's he's, I just want to keep going because I loved it. We're gonna but toss it is it. kind of amazing that they were able to tell this amazingly like well-told story in the- and tie in all those things. I mean, it, it's, it's really amazing, impressive. but they've been doing it in comic books for years. Yes, yes. So, true. Too. Let's take all the storylines are happening at the same time. Like yeah, still connecting. Let's take it over to Kayla real quick. Kayla, were there any things that you spotted that you were super duper excited about? Um, I guess another connection that I don't think you guys quite mentioned is um, being the character Nobu with the hand. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see that uh, more of that in like upcoming we have more seasons of of Daredevil. Um, especially, especially the hand, like we didn't do directly, um, get, get confirmation that Nobu was part of the hand, but I mean, everyone, and, I mean, did we get confirmation? Um, is, is there like an article online that we get were confirmed that Nobu is part of the hand? If so, send it to me or comment below because I may be mistaken, but, um, that is a connection, um, from, to, from the series to the comics. Another another thing is um, stick and a chest. Uh, but um, if 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 we get the hand in the series, then we're definitely going to get um, stick um, and them. Um, that's another possible connection. So I'm just I think um, I think that's the connection that I'm most most excited for that and the con- it's like the Easter egg to Iron Fist um, is another one that I'm really that I'm really excited for but I think I'm a sucker for supervillains I've said this before on the Agents of Shield after show I really am a sucker for supervillains and supervillain organizations so um, Nobu, Nobu Nobu being connected to the hand um, makes me very happy and excited so. I'm looking forward to 
um, getting more of that in upcoming seasons of Daredevil. And the last thing I want to talk about is I want to make a wish list. Yeah. All right? I want to go ahead and... I, obviously, we're going to see Daredevil again in The Defenders. But in future Daredevil... I know. So don't excited. even... I can't don't even... even get too, blah, blah, blah. What do you want to see in future Daredevil stuff? Do you want to see... Are there certain storylines, characters... <sighs> Jessica Jones. Like, I want to see Jessica. I just want her to be part of every show. That's, and I haven't even seen like the, we, none of us have seen the new show yet. Yeah. But I'm such so in love with the this character Bendis created. Like right, no. like that. Yeah. I just want her in everything. I'm excited that that's the next one. I think that's a great. Well, and I, with, with I, the I, being I, Apartment 23 playing her, like I'm kind yeah. of excited. Yeah, yeah. Breaking Ritter's Bad. Like she's just yeah, Kristen great. Ritter's she's, amazing. She can do those dark damage really well. Dark exactly. and damaged she's characters. She's a very yeah. damaged character, and that's what I'm really excited to to like explore as well. Like a really dark female character. Um, we've kind of gotten it with the Black Widow initiative. Yeah. And kind of seeing that backstory, but here we're gonna get really in depth. So I'm really excited for that. Um, what I'm really excited to see is the links to Iron Fist. I want to see Karen Page go through the darkness of her life because she's an incredible character with messed up past, and I want that to be revealed because yeah. we want to see wh I'm what dying it is. To find out what what all the stuff yeah. she's been hiding that whole yeah. What it is that made yeah. her so powerful and mm -hmm. so strong and so strong willed, even though she has like you know this she's lightness, this beautiful yeah. yeah. Um, I want to see that. I'm really hoping that they could do, like, through Defenders, through these dark series, like a Punisher and um, Ghost Rider, because Karen Page actually became a very important character in Ghost Rider for, I almost, I'd love seven, oh, really? for almost seven years. Moon Knight, absolutely, that would be wow. terrific. To see, like, them, these three being kind of like a branch out of the Defenders series, that mm. would be phenomenal. Um... But yeah, I want to see just these threads being pulled in. I want to see Electra Nachos because they mention her. They yes. mention her in the college scene. The Greek girl, I'm Greek, and that made me so excited. I gotta start. I gotta start making Dimitri go last so other people have things to say. Because yeah, I'll just keep <laughs> ranting. But then, that's that's pretty much it. Like I want to see all these storylines go through, and they can, still can continue more of Frank Miller's run throughout. That's it. I'm quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys go. Um, <laughs> is there anything in Marvel left? Uh, no, I I'm, don't know. <laughs> as I mentioned, I'm obviously very excited about seeing Gladiator. I want to see a lot more of Vanessa becoming the just hurt woman that the war between Wilson and Matt turns her into. You know that she yeah. that she ends up lashing out. I want to see Mr. Fear. I love Mr. Fear. Like, oh, I went to law school with you, and you were better than me, and so now I'm a supervillain. I'm, I'm <laughs> fine. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I love supervillains that grow out of not being as good as the yeah, superheroes. Right? So like, so I'm gonna go the other way. Right? I, I'll be really good at being evil. And I literally just cannot wait to watch Danny and Luke and Matt sit around and be like talking and and just you know. Shooting the shit and just well, like the slice of life stuff that I love, yeah, as I said earlier. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, and I just I'm so excited for all that. And there, there's so much that I would love to see. I want to see more of the hand. Um, it just yeah. all of it. Yeah. Can I have all, all of it? it. All <laughs> it. I wonder if they're gonna link Never all that into either Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, or I feel like we're gonna see more of it in Iron Fist than we would in uh, mm -hmm. Luke and Jessica. I wonder if the war that Stick is talking about might be the, you know, the ground that they're laying I think, for Defenders. But I feel like I have read that Kingpin is going to be the bad guy in Defenders. Hmm. Interesting. Because we know Purple Man is the is the bad guy of Jessica Jones, who works for the Kingpin. Right. We don't have a bad guy for Luke Cage, and we don't have a bad guy for Iron Fist yet. Right. Um, we don't have an Iron Fist yet. So uh, I feel like we're all leading... We're going to see Grave, now. Right? Kill Grave. Yeah. He's going to be the bad guy in Jessica Jones. Yeah. And I feel like we're seeing, okay, well, Kingpin's gone, but he didn't leave us without a presence. And we're going to see how he's going to end up still controlling things from prison yeah. and gets himself out because he's the Kingpin. Yeah. So Purple Man's going to be the villain? David Tennant. <laughs> yeah, David Tennant, Kill Grave. You know, Purple Girl joined Alpha Flight for a little while. <laughs> Did she? Yeah. And Purple Man was in a few. I feel like if we had a if we had a TV show that I'm was Alpha like Flight and the there Runaways, was something that could connect everything to Alpha. <laughs> they keep skimming by Alpha Flight, like always could take keeping Here's them why. out of the MCU. Alpha Flight is MC Phase Four. Cinematic Universe. Yeah. Phase Four. 
Alpha Flight. <laughs> just they, all they Alpha were, Flight. One, two, unless, three, four, and then like Avengers. Connected. Connected. And but, then they have the excuse to shoot everything in Canada. It's so much cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> so much cheaper for production. Um, Kayla, do you have any wish lists for future Daredevil or Netflix stuff? Of all the series that's coming to Netflix, um, uh, I mean, there's the Defenders, there's Daredevil, obviously, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and Jessica Jones. I'm most excited to see Jessica Jones. Um, I'm just, I'm just so happy to see the dynamic that she's going to have with, um, with Cage, um, Luke Cage, and I mean, in the comics, um, some of you know, some of you don't know. I don't know. Um, they do have a baby together, so. I really am excited to see Jessica Jones, but I'm also excited to see Iron Fist because I wanna. I'm excited to see uh, his origin story, like on 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 screen, and see how he comes, how he came to be. Uh, I'm really excited to see how they portray that on Netflix. But definitely, I think the all of all of all of them, all the series are coming. All the shows are releasing on Netflix um, uh, from Marvel TV is definitely going to be Jessica Jones. On that, I just wish that they could deal with the Jessica Jones having been an Avenger, like yeah. when she had like powers yeah. and then lost them, because I feel like that's a big... And I'm wondering how they're going to... I don't know. Because the Avengers technically guys didn't exist and we yeah. we were there at the beginning of the Avengers and the MCU. You know? yeah, she could have had some connection to S.H.I.E.L.D. though. Like I'm sure they'll because Fury's got the index. That's true. Or they're exactly. And they're, I think that they're just going to link all these shows a Carter, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. whatever the spinoff is going to be and Defenders it's all going to be linked. Mm. I, I just so. it's, I feel like that's a big part of her like Characters that she used to have superpowers. So yeah. I'm curious as to how that's going to be handled. But anyway, we'll find out back on hopefully focus. very, very yeah. soon. Yeah. We're going to take it to the Twitter box real quick. I want to read some reactions that you guys sent to us using that hashtag nerd shout because we asked you what do you think of Daredevil. Our first one comes from at Candace Whipple. And Candace said, Daredevil is the most addicting show I've seen in a long time. <laughs> you are correct. Perfect blend of humor, action, violence, and emotions. That is the correct <laughs> answer. <laughs> <laughs> All ten, good here. Ten Thumbs points up. to Whipple. Um, <laughs> our next one comes from at New York Jets Underlife Mets for Life, without an E. And they said, the fight scenes are the best I have seen in a Marvel production so far. Very well made. So right. So the stuff were absolutely violent. phenomenal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, Brutal. Um, right. Our next one comes from at wandering underscore Lily, and she said the season finale of Daredevil is probably the best all caps <laughs> hour of television I've seen in a long time. This is my new favorite show. Wow! And then three clapping emojis. Yes. That's <laughs> wow. Three clapping. And the final one. <laughs> one two three. The final one comes from at Faye underscore six one six and. Um, Faye says, watched it all. I need more pronto. I love and hate binge watching. It's fun, but all over far too soon. Tell me about it. I, I watched the entire that. show in one day. Like the day you that it came not. out, I watched it all in one go. It didn't stop. 13 hours, just like what? A couple of bathroom breaks. That was about it. I did nine episodes that was it. after work. So I got home in the afternoon. I did nine episodes till like the wee hours of the morning. Fell asleep and did the last <laughs> four on Saturday. I was so busy over the weekend. I was like squeezing. I blocked out my weekend. I knew I when it was happening. I, I binge watched it and then left like in the morning after to to go to go shoot a film. It's just oh like, my god! It was, <laughs> it was like an intense thing. Saturday night. Did you crazy? Did you walk a shame away from Daredevil? <laughs> did you do the walk of shame? Much, yeah, I binge watched <laughs> it and walked ashamed. It. That's pretty much what happened. And that's hilarious. But I wanted to actually like uh, lay this question. You guys mm -hmm. what did you think of the costume the actual costume because we saw the frank miller costume we got used to it what do we think about that i loved how cool it looked in the opening credits where it's like the red blood or it's wax like or whatever and yeah like, and like, it was super different in the end and then in the episode yeah at the end i some parts i liked and other parts i didn't and some shots i liked it and some shots i didn't yeah that's kind of what i feel i feel like the thing that's important to remember about it is and melvin says it when he picks up the or drops off the box it's not done. You know, it's a work in progress. Yeah. Good yes, enough. That's true. You know, I'm he, fine with that. It's yeah. something that he needs that iconic symbol. And now that you've get the, the fun Easter egg of the bulletin front page with, like, the actual Daredevil drawing. Yes. So he doesn't have the DD on it. And, like, he gets to make it his now, you know? Mm -hmm. That was straight out of Brubaker's run, essentially. I think it? so, yeah. That, that sketch. Yeah. Um, so, all in all, I'm very, very excited for more stuff. 
Thank you guys very, very much for joining us for our Daredevil wrap-up. Uh, we have a lot more Thank coming you your way. Me. Age of Ultron is coming out very, very soon. Uh, and we always have our Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. after the show right here on Nerd Shout. So do me a favor. If this is your first time hanging out with us, come join the party. Yeah. Uh, we're all about community. Go ahead and hit that uh, little thumb up, like down there. Hit subscribe. Find us on social media. At, uh, we're on Nerd Shout. On everything, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, all under Nerd Shout. And let us know what you'd like to see us do, what you'd like to talk about. We love talking to you guys. It's our favorite, favorite, favorite thing. Um, so please, please, please join our community. Yeah. <laughs> just come heartfelt. And we're just going to keep talking about what we love. And share it with you guys. And that means after the camera shuts off. So, <laughs> so thank you guys very, very much from me and the whole team over here at Nerd Shout. We love you. We cannot wait to do more of this. And remember, we want to hear your Nerd, nerd Shout. shout. <laughs> you were ready for yeah, it. Yeah, baby, yeah. we did it. <laughs> Peace out, guys. <laughs> Let's talk about the show. Okay. 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 Yeah, baby. Are we gonna make out? <laughs> no! <laughs> no, wait, keep recording. Stop. Are you still recording? Yes. <laughs> yeah, baby. My larynx. Oh, that I thought it was your balls. No. Oh. Anatomy. Can I stop recording now? Yes. <laughs> yes! I was so excited to see Ben Urich oh, on yeah, camera. Oh, that's exactly what I was thinking. Because <laughs> you've got Ben, Foggy, and Karen. Let's talk about them for a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Foggy is so fantastically dorkily charming. He's amazing. That and as he was one of my favorite characters. Total nerd like me. I was like, that'd be me if I were if I were Foggy. Like that. I love that stuff all the time. And Karen Page. I that poor girl. I can never stop shaking my head at that girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and if and we, perfect we, casting, on, Deborah and Will. Like, that is that because I don't know if anybody yeah. can do better what she does with like <laughs> vulnerability but still being a tough ass and mm -hmm. still like she's, just being confused yeah, she pulled and, that off so well yeah, yeah she's incredible. great i mean true blood she had got to do a lot of that i haven't too, seen true blood so i need she's to do that great she's it's okay phenomenal. watch the first like three four seasons <laughs> oh, come on because <laughs> no, she comes in later and she's amazing How much the, is i think brilliant. she comes in like in season three or so like yeah, two or two early probably. I think it's he told him not Oh, no, she comes in that. season one. That's right. <laughs> Kayla's saying she comes in season one. She's right. Yeah. Um, but I thought, that, yeah, I thought that she was terrific. I loved Ben Urich. I was so sad when they kill him off because uh, a lot of fans were hoping that they were going to get that connection between yeah. the Daily Bugle um, and Spider-Man. Yeah. But it didn't great. happen. It was a very poignant moment, though, his death. Yeah. It really helped progress and that story. And here's the thing. Mark and I were talking earlier his death might be the first, like the first major character death, and then sign into a different account, and then watch. watch I'm it. fishing for views. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Anyway, we are here to talk about Marvel's first Netflix outing, Daredevil, mm. uh, and then we're going to be the dark side of the universe. Exactly. We're going to be dividing this into four topics. We're going to talk about the characters. We're going to talk about the story. We're going to talk about the connections to the MCU All and the other Easter such stuff. And, stuff yeah. and then we're going to talk about what we want to see in the future. So keep those ideas in mind when we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. Topic one: the characters. Dum dum bum. <laughs> All right. So first off, Daredevil, Charlie Cox playing Matt Murdock. Yeah. I thought he was wonderful. I yeah. found out in, in reading after I watched the show that he was actually Joe Quesada's first choice for Matt Murdock before they even had got the rights back to do the to do the show. Right. And I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. He learned the accent, he learned the fights. I thought he was wonderful. He had that just the feel of Matt Murdock for mm -hmm. me. What do you guys what did you guys think of him? Um yeah, I, I actually loved him right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. My my actually my roommate said something interesting where he liked him as Daredevil. But as Matt Murdock, he was like, but he'd only watched the first couple. Okay. And I, uh. and then I was like, well, but they kind of explain later why he's kind de like detaches himself from yeah. humans, like, you know, like yeah. from making too many connections. And I, I feel like 
that's what he was sensing, but he hadn't gotten to that episode yet. And I think so that's because I thought he was great. Yeah. That's what that is. That is like six follow it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they're gonna link Never all that into either Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, or I feel like we're gonna see more of it in Iron Fist than we would in uh, mm-hmm. Luke and Jessica. I wonder if the war that Stick is talking about might be the you know the ground that they're laying I think, for Defenders. But I feel like I have read that Kingpin is going to be the bad guy in Defenders. Hmm. Interesting. Because we know Purple Man is the is the bad guy of Jessica Jones who works for the Kingpin. Right. We don't have a bad guy for Luke Cage, and we don't have a bad guy for Iron Fist yet. Right. Um, we don't have an Iron Fist yet. So uh, I feel like we're all leading. We're gonna see Grave, now, right? Kilgrave is yeah. gonna be the bad guy in Jessica Jones. Yeah. And I feel like we're seeing, okay, well, Kingpin's gone, but he didn't leave us without a presence, and we're gonna see how he's gonna end up still controlling things from prison, yeah. and gets himself out because he's the Kingpin. Yeah. So, Purple Man's gonna be the villain, and David Tennant. <laughs> yeah, David Tennant and Kilgrave. You know, Purple Girl joined Alpha Flight for a little while. <laughs> Did she? Yeah. And Purple Man was in a few. I feel like if we had a if we had a TV show that was Alpha Flight and the Runaways, something that could connect everything to (laughs) they keep skimming by Alpha Flight, like almost could take keep them out of the MCU. Alpha Flight is Phase Four cinematic universe. Yeah, Phase Four. Alpha Flight. <laughs> just all Baseball. Alpha Flight. One, two, unless, three, four, and then Avengers. Avengers. And but, then they have the excuse to shoot everything in Canada. It's so much <laughs> um, But yeah, I want to see just these threads being pulled in. I want to see Electra Nachos because they mention her. They yes. mention her in the college scene. The Greek girl. I'm Greek, and that made me so excited. I gotta start. I gotta start making Dimitri go last so other people have things to say. Because yeah, I'll just keep <laughs> ranting. But then, that's that's pretty much it. Like I want to see all these storylines go through, and they can, still can continue more of Frank Miller's run throughout. And that's it. I'm quiet now. You guys go. <laughs> Can you guys go. Um, <laughs> is there anything in Marvel left? Uh, no, I I'm, don't know. <laughs> as I mentioned, I'm obviously very excited about seeing Gladiator. I want to see a lot more of Vanessa becoming the just hurt woman that the war between Wilson and Matt turns her into. You know that she yeah. that she ends up lashing out. I want to see Mr. Fear. I love Mr. Fear. Like, oh, I went to law school with you, and you were better than me, and so now I'm a super villain. I, I'm <laughs> fine. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> you know, uh, I, want- I love a super villains that grow out of not being as good as the superheroes. <laughs> right? so that they to go the other way. Right? I, I'll be really good at being evil. <laughs> and I literally just cannot wait to watch Danny and Luke and Matt sit around and be like talking and and just you know. Shooting the shit and just well, like the slice of life stuff that I love, yeah, which I said earlier, yeah, absolutely, but, yeah. And I just I'm so excited for all that, and there, there's so much that I would love to see. I want to see more of the hand. Um, it just yeah. I know I'm uh, missing some other people, but all the characters in the show, I have no complaints. They did a very good job in portraying the number one most important character show being Daredevil. There's an interesting parallel that we've kind of talked about a little bit, but not really on camera, between Wesley, who is amazing, and yeah, he's one of uh, the best Marvel Foggy. Movies. The young Victor Garber. No. The young Victor Garber. <laughs> <laughs> um, between Foggy and Wesley, because yeah. they're you, as much the best as best friends of the two leads. Yeah. The two main, yeah. Wesley is Kingpin's best friend. He talks about it, like even when he when Wesley dies, it's like such a big deal. And to see his character development and what he has to go through and that. And for Matt Murdock, like, it's almost like the death of his friendship by Foggy finding out mm-hmm. who he is, who Matt mm-hmm. Murdock really is. Which is just like an interesting kind of parallel of the relationship that each one of them I has. also do love um, Kingpin's, like, that's when he gets the angriest and the most violent. Is like you came after somebody close to me, somebody yeah. that I care about. When you turn the and table he does on. what everybody wants to do when that happens. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it I'm was not throwing you down a fucking elevator yeah. shaft. It was kind of amazing. He was like, I'm not thinking politically. I'm not thinking about career or anything. He's like, I'm just gonna fucking kill you. Yeah, yeah. It's just because it you did that. Him. Yeah. It broke him. It broke him so bad. And mm-hmm. it's and I loved Wesley. Because- Tad bit of the comic relief. Um, to the series, and I really liked learning more about his relationship with Matt, and then seeing him really get emotional and heartbroken about the fact that Matt kept this secret from him, 
I really did affect him, and I re- I but I I liked it watching it as a fan. I really I really did love that episode. Um, um, avocado it was like avocados at law or something. I don't know, lawyers avocados. I forget the exact um exact phrase. Um, you guys mention it later. Um, but oh, going on to Karen Page, which is um. The third person in this old wacky family of theirs um, in their law firm, uh, Karen Page, as a character, I feel like she had the one of the most dramatic changes from episode one to the last episode of the show. You know, she really started off to in this like damsel in distress um, uh, archetype uh, of a character, but you really see that change until uh, um especially throughout the entire series you just see her slowly breaking and breaking down um as a character and it really actually relates more um as um um to her uh, counterpart in the comics uh for people who um know her backstory will relate to this is that she just has a really she comes from a really really dark past Wesley was yeah. the bad guy but in fact, it was like... And it was a really happy. interesting thing. I didn't even think about it until just now. Because I did, when we found out that someone had tried to kill Vanessa, I was like, is it Wesley? Is Wesley trying to bring him back into his power? And now I wonder if, because Wilson had Vanessa, Wesley was willing to start taking more risks. Like, taking the gun to deal with Karen himself. Right, that he wanted to protect him. Yeah, it was like, you've got Vanessa now. If something happens to me, you have somebody infinitely more important. It's a best friend thing. Yeah. You know, it's just like, I need to make sure that there's always something there to t- someone there to take care of you. Yeah, it was really, it was really oh, honest. Oh, wow, yeah. And the fact that he was saying that, like, he didn't really want to be in this city. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't really want to be in New York. It wasn't his favorite thing. And Karen was feeling kind of the same way. Like oh, it's almost like the relationship with uh, with um, Foggy and, and Foggy and, and Matt. Matt. That episode was so good, especially yeah, like when, when, when Matt is so beat up and they're in the that one. Oh, they're, they do and the they're in the room forever. Yeah, and yeah, avocados at law. Uh, so that was so like true West when they're like yeah. after he finds out he's Daredevil and like. That they're just in that room together and Matt can't move and like that whole thing. You I was mean like, Sam oh my God, true West? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's exactly, exactly what like I felt like two characters. It, it was like, absolutely so Austin and Lee. Yes, 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 yes. Verbally, I love that reference. It's so true. <laughs> it's, and it's so true. honest because their banter was incredible, and that's what I love from Foggy. Like it felt so normal. It was. So- I forget the exact um, exact phrase. Um, you guys mention it later. Um, but oh, going on to Karen Page, which is um, the third person in this old wacky family of theirs um, in their law firm. Uh, Karen Page, as a character, I feel like she had the one of the most dramatic changes from episode one to the last episode of the show. You know, she really started off to in this like damsel in distress um uh archetype uh, of a character but you really see that change until uh, um especially throughout the entire series you just see her slowly breaking and breaking down um as a character and it really actually relates more um as um um to her uh, counterpart in the comics uh, uh, for people who um, know her backstory will relate to this is that she just has a really she comes from a really really dark past and um, you slowly get to see that as, as the series progresses and I really enjoyed um, enjoyed that because it, it she in my opinion was the a character that really did like a 180 for me from like episode one of the series to the final episode of the series and I mean, it was brutal when she killed Wesley. Absolutely brutal when she killed Wesley. But she, she just you know emptied out that gun on him, and it was um, really intense to go with a, a go with a series that was much darker, um, especially than what from what we know, which is Age of the Shield. Which brings me to another point with um, mentioning Age of the Shield. A lot of people are worried um, and just actually quite not even worried, but. Um, have questions in their mind how, um, how like Daredevil is going to connect with Age of Shield because they are so different in in tones. Like um, being that Daredevil is the darker one and Age of Shield is much 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 more lighter. So, um, wh- I mean, what do you guys think? Like, oh, how how will they possibly connect to Age of Shield because they are so different in tones? 
That's a great it's really point, good. Kayla. And and I was thinking about that a lot too, with like oh, the yeah. darker tone. But I mean, I have to admit, like the the first trailer we saw for Age of Ultron was so dark that yeah. I it fit, yeah. I felt physically disturbed by it like, <laughs> because it was so dark. I was like, I don't know. I, I have to see it. I don't know. What well, yeah, that's it's when the, too the, dark. The it's reviews dark. have been coming in so far for Age of Ultron. I've also been saying that it's a lot darker. So well, yeah, yeah, and I mean, and I like, feel like, but I think it's important to show the different, just like in the real world. That's what I was about exactly. to say. Yeah. Like the really dark parts, and there's things, really dark things happening in the corners of New York City. Yes, that that's the honesty that people comes out can, of it. The, you, they're living right next door to it, but that's not their life. It matches Karen Page's line of. You don't see the... Of the series. And I think that makes for a really great villain because when you feel bad for villains, even if it's like for a split second, um, and then and then you realize, oh my God, this guy's a bad guy. You hate them even more. Like, they, like you hate them even more and they become more terrifying. It's like, it's... And that's what makes a really great villain for me. And I thought um, Fisk, um, season one, Kingpin, setting up this... Um, I can't wait till somebody actually calls him Kingpin. That would be really, really exciting when that actually happens. But um, Fisk, season one, definitely 10 out of 10 for me as well. Karen Page, 10 out of 10. Actually, 10 out of 10. I just love her. Um, Wesley, 10 out of, I think the char- all the characters in the show are just fantastic. Ben Urich, um, honorable mentions. I can't go on. I think I've been going on too, too much, and I'll pass it back to you guys. But... Um, Ben York, great character. Leland, another great character. Nobu, Nobu, the hand. <sighs> um, uh, stick. Oh God, the stick. Uh, that episode literally called stick. Uh, great episode. Such a great episode because I love seeing Stick and Matt. They're like they just like freaking. It's like they hate and love each other, or it's just hate. Ugh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know too much into their level comics, but um, Stick, Madame Gao. Uh, I know I'm uh, missing some other people. The the fun Easter egg of the bulletin front page with like the actual Daredevil drawing. Yes. So he doesn't have the DD on it, and like he gets to make it his now. You know, mm-hmm. that was straight out of Brew Baker's run, essentially. I think it? so. Yeah, that, that sketch. Yeah. Um, so, all in all, I'm very very excited for more stuff. Thank you guys very, very much for joining us for our Daredevil wrap-up. We have a lot more coming your way. Age of Ultron is coming out very, very soon. Uh, And we always have our Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. after the show right here on Nerd Shout. So do me a favor. If this is your first time hanging out with us, come join the party. Uh, We're all about community. Go ahead and hit that uh, little thumb up, like down there. Hit subscribe. Find us on social media. At uh, We're on Nerd Shout on everything. On Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. All under Nerd Shout. And let us know what you'd like to see us do. What you'd like to talk about. We love talking to you guys. It's our favorite, favorite, favorite thing. Um, so please, please, please join our community. Yeah. <laughs> Just come. Heartfelt. And we're just going to keep talking about what we love and share it with you guys. And that means after the camera shuts off. So so thank you guys very, very much from me and the whole team over here at Nerd Shout. We love you. We cannot wait to do more of this. And remember, we want to hear your Nerd Nerd Shout. Shout. (laughs) You were ready for it. Yeah, baby, we did it. (laughs) Peace out, guys. Um, season one, Kingpin setting up this. Um, I can't wait till somebody actually calls him Kingpin. That would be really, really exciting when that actually happens. But um, Fisk, season one, definitely ten out of ten for me as well. Karen Page, ten out of ten. Actually, ten out of ten. I just love her. Um, Wesley, ten. Out of, I think the char- all the characters in the show are just fantastic. Ben Urick, um, honorable mentions. I can't go on. I think I've been going on too too much, and I'll pass it back to you guys. But um, Ben York, great character. Leland, another great character. Nobu, Nobu, the hand. <sighs> um, uh, stick. Oh God, the stick. Uh, that episode literally called stick. Uh, great episode, such a great episode, because I love seeing Stick and Matt, they're like, they just like freaking, it's like they hate and love each other, or it's just hate, ugh, I don't know, I don't, I don't know too much into their level comics, but, um, Stick, Madame Gao, uh, I know I'm, uh, missing some other people, but all the characters in the show, I have no complaints, they did a very good job, 
and portraying the number one most important character show being Daredevil. There's an interesting parallel that we've kind of talked about a little bit, but not really on camera, between Wesley, who is amazing, and yeah, he's one of uh, the best Marvel Foggy, Marvel. the young... Hey guys, and welcome to Nerd Shout's Daredevil Season 1 Review. Yeah. Spoilers! We are Warning. going to talk about the whole series as a reaction, and so we will be doing some spoiler things. If yep. you have not watched the show, please go watch it, and then come back and watch us. You can put this on mute in the corner while you watch Daredevil, and then sign into a different account, and then watch. watch I'm it. fishing for views. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Anyway, we are here to talk about Marvel's first Netflix outing, Daredevil. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're going Foray to be the dark side of the universe. Exactly. We're going to be dividing this into four topics. We're going to talk about the characters. We're going to talk about the story. We're going to talk about the connections to the MCU All and the other Easter such stuff. stuff yeah. And then we're going to talk about what we want to see in the future. So. Keep those ideas in mind when we're talking about this. Mm -hmm. Topic one, the characters. Dum dum bum. <laughs> All right, so first off, Daredevil. Charlie Cox playing Matt Murdock. Yeah. I thought he was wonderful. I yeah. found out in, in reading after I watched the show that he was actually Joe Quesada's first choice for Matt Murdock before they even had got the rights back to do the to do the show. Right. And I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. He learned the accent. He learned the fights. I thought he was wonderful. He had that... Just the feel of Matt Murdock for mm -hmm. me. What do you guys? What did you guys think of him? Um, yeah, I I actually loved him right from more about his relationship with Matt, and then him, seeing him really get emotional and heart, heartbroken about the fact that Matt kept this secret from him. It really did affect him, and I re I but I I liked it watching it as a fan. I really I really did love that episode. Um, um, avocado it was like a avocados at law or something. I don't uh, lawyers avocados. I forget the exact um exact phrase. Um, you guys mention it later. Um, but oh, going on to Karen Page, which is um. The third person in this old wacky family of theirs um, in their law firm, uh, Karen Page, as a character, I feel like she had the one of the most dramatic changes from episode one to the last episode of the show. You know, she really started off to in this like damsel in distress um, uh, archetype uh, of a character, but you really see that change until uh, um especially throughout the entire series you just see her slowly breaking and breaking down um as a character and it really actually relates more um as um um to her uh, counterpart in the comics uh for people who um know her backstory will relate to this is that she just has a really she comes from a really really dark past and um, you slowly get to see that as the series progresses. And I